Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Super Tease video. And in this one, I will be covering my top seven solo queue PvP specs for Dragonflight Season 1. By the end of this video, you will have a good idea and grasp of what the anticipated metagame is going to be so that you can either utilize these specializations for your own success or possibly utilize some counters to deal with what is likely going to be the upcoming meta due to a significant amount of changes to a huge amount of class. And if you missed any of those and don't want to miss any in the future, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button because I'm always covering that content here and doing my best to keep you up to date. Not to mention that your support is greatly appreciated on my long-term goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers. So let's get started with the top seven solo queue PvP specs. The first one on the list might come as a bit of a surprise. However, I do think that the Balanced Druid is likely to be a powerful specialization in the solo queue environment, given the most recent changes to the survivability of a lot of melee DPS. I think that the damage profile of Balanced Druid is going to become increasingly more valuable. It's something that is really well suited to the fast pace of dampening ramping up as fast as it does, and it brings some of the best crowd control not only offensively through instant solar beam silence routes on healers as well as cyclone to keep your partners alive. If you are a talented Balanced Druid, your damage will be desirable and your crowd control will be vital for keeping your team alive and executing four kills. This specialization is definitely going to be a strong performer. We saw it well represented as well in terms of a track record given the Shadowlands solo queue tournament uh, in the past and it's got great synergies and viability and versatility with a lot of other classes that normally maybe it wouldn't succeed with well coordinated compositions in 3v3 but in solo queue environment where it's kind of just you know you're you're just going to be making things up as you go. You're not going to be really super coordinated with three to one goes. Balanced Druid does synergize with a lot of classes. I think it's going to be very nasty. Moving into this number six position is the Elemental Shaman. Similarly to the Balanced Druid, I think that its damage profile is a little bit more threatening. So you're going to be able to close out games a bit faster. But these are really close. They could they could either be seven or six next to each other. I really want to wait and see. Um, both of them could struggle. The main reason I think Ellie Shaman will be a little bit better than Balanced Druid is that it's going to have access to the Dark Iron Dwarf racial. I think that this racial is going to be very important in Season 1 here. Any ability to remove bleed effects, any ability to remove damage over time effects is going to be really valuable, and maybe that's the thing that's putting it over the edge for me here. Uh, I think that Ellie Shaman, similarly to Balanced Druid, can synergize with melee DPS, caster DPS. It's got a lot of options uh, on the table for itself, and it's got a great damage profile, which is very desirable in the fast-paced environment of dampening. Ellie Shaman struggles with those melee DPS, DPS that were very bulky and very difficult to take down, but a lot of those melee DPS have been nerfed now up to this point, so Elemental Shaman is likely to have an opportunity to shine, and you might be thinking, how are these classes 7 and 6? Like, what could possibly be better than these uh, after this description? But just, just you wait, we will get there. Number 5 is still the Preservation Evoker. Uh, this healer is just doing way more health per second than any other hero healer currently, and brings a lot of vital mechanics to deal with bleed effects, which I think are going to be very apparent uh, early on in Dragonflight Season 1, unless we see more changes. And of course, if we do, those will be covered here in a video, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, but Preservation Evoker's throughput is just through the roof. It's going to synergize with basically anything. It offers valuable damage as a healer uh, that can execute for kills with a little bit of cheeky crowd control, although I would say on the crowd control front is where it is lacking in comparison to some other healers, but it more than makes up for that with the amount of throughput that it has in both healing and damage. Uh, and the Cauterizing Flame is going to be very important uh, to the success of this specialization or to your success on the ladder. In the number four position is going to be the Havoc Demon Hunter. And that may still come as a surprise, but the main reason that I think Havoc Demon Hunter is still going to be uh, an important class is that it, it's very synergized specialization. It can play with a lot of things. It's still going to have mortal wounds. It still has some of the most instant crowd control chains I've ever seen. Like in the past, when Scatter Shot and Freezing Trap didn't DR, Hunter was a very scary threat. If you scatter into a Freezing Trap, Demon Hunter is going to stun you into an in cap, into a fear. So single handedly, you can take a healer out of the game for pretty much the longest period of time without having to cast any crowd control which is going to be really scary really threatening for teams to deal with and also I think you're still going to be very tanky and bulky in metamorphosis when you have your leech active and likely with the short duration of these matches you're going to be in meta form for a significant portion of your game so you're still going to be very durable high mobility high cc mortal wounds very good synergies even despite the nerfs I think you're probably still going to come out ahead of all the classes that did get nerfed as significantly as they did but perhaps not 
not as powerful as you would have been in in the past given the fact that your um, fodder of the flame heal has been nerfed significantly but still really good synergies definitely a top performing specialization in solo queue number three is going to be the shadow priest i think that shadow priest is going to be bringing some of the best personal defensive cooldowns uh, in comparison to the other options that i listed above um, it's still going to have access to racials that can deal with a lot of the meta specializations it brings a lot of immediate emergency cooldowns like life swap for its allies and it brings in the type of crowd control chain that havoc demon hunter has with stun and silence paired up with siphene and mind games although now siphene is more easily killed it can also now be shielded and healed by your allies so for anybody that's playing with a shadow priest if you're a healer i've seen some very cheesy mechanics like ultimate sacrifice on holy paladins on a siphene so it, it's immortal basically it can't take damage um these types of mechanics i'm not sure if they'll be correct in the future and they may be so be aware of that but those are kinds of cheese mechanics that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of and let your teammates know in the waiting room before your match zones if you have a paladin tell them like hey if you sack my siphene that thing is going to sit full duration and we're probably going to kill something uh, but those types of healing reduction me mechanics instant crowd control so you can get them without having to have too much help from your teammates very important when you're not going to have communication has a great damage profile that's going to benefit from the dampening pace that's currently active in solo queue so definitely a top performing spec how is it not number one Moving into the number two position for me is going to be the Assassination Rogue. This is gaining more and more traction as I see it. I think it's going to become very important to be running things that can deal with bleeds, can deal with poisons if you have talents or racials that you can pick that are going to be able to counteract that because this spec is going to be dominant uh, with the fact that it has two charges of shiv. It can now also get wound and deadly poison at the same time, so it's not sacrificing damage for that mortal wounds effect. It is going to be running people over. I think it's going to be easier to play than Subtlety Rogue in a solo queue environment, although I do think Subtlety rogue could still do well uh, outlaw rogue can definitely be just as strong as assassination although i feel like its kill pressure is going to be a little bit lower outlaw's advantage would be that its survivability is higher but i think that assassination's pressure at the moment is kind of almost unparalleled um, the only main problem with assassination rogue would be its fragility you know how easy is it to take down you're going to need to be aware of that uh, get ready defensively use your evasions at higher health so your healers aren't panicking and overlapping with you a lot uh, but this spec was really underrated coming up uh, through the ranks i feel like it was just underplayed and really wasn't fully explored. I think Rogue in general is going to become increasingly threatening with cooldown reduction and double vanish charges and the fact that Shadow Dance is available now to all Rogue specializations. I think you're going to start to see more and more Rogues um, despite how down-talked they've been pretty much up to this point. But this has been very nasty specialization right now from war games that I've seen and from just personal observations. It's going to synergize really well with a lot of classes as well, whether it even just be other melee, you just for the fact that you can KO a target, you bring blind the longest crowd control uh, in the game with an instant duration so really powerful class um, but maybe you get the reason i haven't put you on number one is because i think if people adapt to it and start picking up dark iron or and, and dwarf and stuff like that and there's a lot of evokers your bleeds might not be super effective so moving into the number one position for me is actually still currently demonology warlock even despite the absorb nerfs i think the fact that it has mortal wounds has stun has coil has spammable crowd control with fear uh, is going to put it in a, in a position where it can set up kills by itself it can save its allies by itself it still has great personal defense mobility to be able to move and escape from enemy attackers it's threatening throughout the match it synergizes with pretty much anything it's a caster class it's a melee class it, it can do everything right it's got physical damage as well as magical damage so if rogues are prevalent there's a current fell storm build for demonology so your pet's doing a lot of physical damage so rogues might get caught off guard and die with cloak of shadows up because it's all physical damage you just have the best profile you fit really well uh into dampening and just doing overall damage or setting up for burst damage, really flexible and versatile class, even despite the nerfs. I do think it's probably maybe a bit harder to play um, than other classes. And because of that, you, you might get caught off guard a bit by it, but it's definitely one that is worth investing. I think it's gonna be really nasty uh, in particular, and that's why it's coming in the number one position. Now, there are some honorable mentions um, for this list that I wanna talk about that could deal with the meta. Uh, and some of those are Survival Hunter. Again, the main reason for this is the ability to counteract bleed effects um, with how prevalent things like Assassination Rogue and Feral Druid are likely to be in PVP. Survival Hunter could have a really good kind of niche 
Unleashed there for countering that. Fury Warrior is still Zug Zug, really straightforward, easy to play class that can still run people over. So if you're looking for a spec that's like, you know, just want to jump in and start having some immediate success, I think that Fury Warrior is going to be one of the best picks for those, but it could struggle a bit uh, as time goes on. You may want to opt into some of the talents that allow it to remove bleed effects um, because, again, that'll be a nice counter depending on how prevalent uh, Feral Druids and Assassination Rogues are. Rep Paladin for the same reason, the immunity effects to be able to remove these all-ins from these classes, and Rep Paladin does an insane amount of damage. Don't let the Rep Paladin player sandbag you right now. It is a phenomenal spec. There's basically every spec in the game is looking really solid right now, I'd say, aside from Destro Warlock. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, and the defense of, survivor, of Hunter in general is a little bit weak. Uh, and then Devastation Evoker, I think it's still... I see some people trying new builds with it, but I... I, I would feel safer saying that it's probably going to be a bit of a struggle but you can really go with anything i think in this first patch should be a really fun season i've loved all of the changes that they have made so far it's definitely going to be make for a more engaging game pace um the one shots of shadowlands seem to be pretty much all resolved away it's going to be much more about ramping your damage over time getting overwhelming your targets at least from my personal experience and from what i've seen so i'm very excited to get something new um a breath of fresh air and a complete meta shift and a lot of specs have a lot of new exciting things to check out so make sure you play them even if your spec didn't make this list those these are just some concepts and ideas to keep your your mind wrapped around moving into the start of the season so that you can be ahead of the competition other than that thank you very much for watching this video and i will catch you in the next one